Mr. Beat presents Presidential Elections, elections in American, American History. The 27th presidential election in American history took place on November 8, 1892. Benjamin Harrison had a rough term as president, and even though he had doubts himself, he decided to run for re-election. The Republican Party went ahead and re-nominated him, despite potential challenges from John Sherman and James Blaine again. Levi Morton would not be re-nominated, however. Back in 1890, Harrison supported the Lodge Bill, an election law meant to help the black vote in the South as a way to fight Jim Crow laws, but it didn't pass. Harrison blamed Morton for the bill's failure, and at the Republican convention, Morton was replaced by Whitelaw Reed, the editor of the New York Tribune and recent U.S. ambassador to France. Guess who's back? Grover's back. After winning the popular vote but losing the electoral vote in 1888, Grover Cleveland was back with a vengeance in 1892. While many were ready for a return to his policies, he did face opponents like David Hill, the senator and former governor of New York. However, Cleveland survived to become the first Democrat nominated a third time to run for president. The Democrats nominated Adlai Stevenson, a former U.S. representative from Illinois, for vice president. Stevenson was an interesting choice because he favored greenbacks and free silver to inflate the currency, while Cleveland was a gold standard guy who didn't like just printing money. Cleveland was cool with Stevenson being on the ticket, though, as it provided some balance. Still, a lot of Americans were not satisfied with the two-party system, and by this time, a new movement had emerged. The previous year, alliances made up of poor cotton farmers in the South and wheat farmers in the Plains states, along with some labor unions in the North and Republicans in the South, all joined forces to create a new political party called the People's Party. More commonly known as populists, they generally were hostile to elites, banks, railroad corporations, the gold standard, and even city folk. If you wanted to know more about the populists, check out my story time video now. I'll wait for you to come back. I promise. But only if you first pause this video. Otherwise, I will just keep talking. You good now? Okay, so the populists had their first convention in Omaha, Nebraska, which was a populist hot spot. They nominated James Weaver, the former U.S. representative from Iowa who had previously ran for president in the Greenback Party back in 1880 but lost. His running mate was James Field, the Attorney General of Virginia. The Prohibition Party was still going strong. At their convention, there were talks of merging with the populace, but it just never panned out. They nominated John Bidwell, one of the original pioneers to head out west, and a former U.S. representative from California, Texas religious leader James Cranfill, a.k.a. the Reverend J.B. Cranfill was Bidwell's running mate. One interesting political party that emerged in 1892 was the Socialist Labor Party. They were only on the ballot in five states, but had a unique platform that called for getting rid of the positions of president and vice president. So they nominated camera inventor Simon Wing for president and social activist Charles Matchett for vice president, even though both would willingly give up their positions after getting elected. Weird. Just like the last presidential election, debate over tariffs dominated the campaigns. Boy, is that exciting stuff. Harrison defended his support of the McKinley tariff, while Cleveland continued to argue for tariff reductions. The campaigns all stopped, though, after Harrison's wife, First Lady Carolyn Harrison, passed away in October from tuberculosis. Oh, yeah! Since the last election, six new states had been admitted to the Union. North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, Washington, Iowa, Idaho and Wyoming. So they all now got to participate. And here are the results. Grover Cleveland won, becoming the 24th president in American history. He received 277 electoral votes. He won 46% of the popular vote, which was actually his worst showing yet. But a win is a win. Benjamin Harrison received 145 electoral votes and 43% of the popular vote. Populist James Weaver finished third with 22 electoral votes and 8.5% of the popular vote. He became the only third-party candidate between 18 
1960 and 1912 to win electoral votes. He did especially well in the West and South. John Bidwell received 2.2% of the popular vote, the best performance by the Prohibition Party yet. All other candidates received less than 1%. Adlai Stevenson became the 23rd vice president in American history. This was the first time incumbent presidents were defeated in two consecutive elections. This wouldn't happen again until 1980. Up to that point in history, Cleveland was one of only two people, the other being Andrew Jackson, to win the popular vote in three American presidential elections. He, of course, is the only president in American history to serve two non-consecutive terms in office. I'll see you for the next election, buddy.